I've never used Payne's Gray. I, I don't like the color. Uh, but Winslow used it, so I had to use it. And uh, if you look at the, the faces of the men in this, they look gray. They look dead to me. I mean, the men look dead. And uh, so I, I just, so these two guys have got Payne's Gray disease. That's my theory about what, what's wrong with them. But nonetheless, he used it. So, and here's something. I may not, may not be able to see this. I didn't, didn't think about the lights being off. But uh, here's, here's a little dinky photograph of the blue boat painting. And here was my color sheet that I worked up to do this, in which I showed the six colors that he used, and then how he how I got all the colors in the painting from those six colors. So the only thing I practiced on that painting was the three trees, because when I look at that painting, that's all I see. I love those three trees. Mine aren't as good as his, but they're not bad. But I love those three trees. And the, the boat and the two men I could care less about. The trees are magnificent. That's why I painted it. So I don't know if you can see this, but I'll pass around anyway. And look at it in the dark. Thank you. OK, so I'm going to do a waterfall today, hopefully. And this one is a, uh, by the way, it's the first time I've ever demoed a full sheet water color vertical format. I've done quite a few horizontals, but I thought, well, that's a waterfall should be vertical. And uh, this is a photograph I have of it. It's, it's Moss Glen, Glen's Falls in Granville, Vermont. And it's a beautiful waterfall. And, uh, I chose this one because it has all the green moss on it. And it's Glens Falls in Vermont? Glens moss. Falls, oh, oh. Moss Glens Falls as in waterfalls. And, and I live near Glens Falls. But I Not really, Glens Falls, New York. You said Vermont. And, and there's also Granville, Vermont. Oh, Granville, Vermont. And there's a Granville, New York, too. No waterfalls in Granville, New York, though. But I picked this because, first of all, I don't like to paint gray rocks. Uh, these, these are probably the rocks I'd like to paint more as so a whole lot. Just, 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 bright, just bright colored rocks. I sound like gray rocks. So this has a lot of gray rocks in it, but when I saw that green moss on it, ah, boy, I said, I don't need much of an excuse to put color in. So uh, I very seldom look at a, at a uh, photograph after I, once I start painting, I, uh, most of the time, I turn the paintings, most of the time I throw the photograph away. I have a drawing, and I make believe I'm in third grade, and I have a drawing and a coloring book, and I have a box of crayons. And I, and I just have at it. And there was no Payne's Gray in those coloring book, in those crayon boxes either. But I'm trying to get the waterfall so it looks right, and the rest of the painting probably will not look like the photograph at all. I don't, I don't, too, I don't care too much about that. I'm trying to create a painting that really I'm not trying to uh, match the photograph at all. So I'm going to start by uh, throwing some, uh, I want to watch where my water is down here. I'm going to throw some uh, color on the rocks down here. And I'm going to put the orange and, and uh, some uh, raw sienna. And I'll put some of the, a little bit of the Janet's Violet's Rose. Oh, that's a nice Violet Rose on this. So I'm almost done another five minutes, I'll have the painting finished. <laughs> um, that's actually close enough for that. But you did mask some areas, right? Oh, I, I'm sorry to tell you that. Yes, I, I, I never use a masking fluid, except when I'm doing a demo, because uh, I figured I got, there's time pressure, and uh, it'll save me a little bit of time. And I, This is me up here, by the way, and I put myself in because I got a white shirt. I forgot to mention the white. The waterfall is going to be a lot of white, so I'm going to try to. I'm going to have a white shirt, white in the sky, and I hope to leave some white on the rocks. That's my strategy. And so I'm looking as white as a color, which I want all around the whole paper, not just in the waterfall. So anyway, but uh, the other thing I'm obviously shooting for is to get values that pop the water off, and I have soft edges. Those are the th oh shucks, I knew this was going to happen. Darn it. What do you need? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, you know. If you watch me paint for a while, you're going to see I'm going to contaminate all my colors, by the way. I end up, I'll end up putting my blue paint right in the yellow. So you'll see them, they'll all be dirty after a while. So I have a friend of mine who 
nice woman artist friend, and, and she says, she uses two yellows, a clean yellow and a dirty yellow. Some of you may do that. And I started with that, and I ended up with two dirty yellows. <laughs> that was supposed to be my clean water, and I'm paint, my paintbrush in it already. I was going to use that to uh, blend, to soften the edges, so I got, I got mixed up with <laughs> where I was. So anyway, I'm going to uh, do it just a little bit in here, too. Doesn't matter too much where this goes. That's pretty light. Mostly, mostly really light. I just want that to dry before I get in there. Okay, now I'm gonna now I'll, I'll do it more conventionally, paint from the top down. You know what I did put in there? Just a second. I didn't get any red in there since I'm wearing this red shirt today. I at least got to get some red in. This is uh, that ornamental red that I'm trying to get rid of. Close enough. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm just gonna water the, water the sky a little bit. I'm not gonna call it this way. And uh, I'm going to put uh, some. Uh, that's pretty strong. Let's see. That'll be okay. That's just uh, pure cobalt blue right now. And I'm gonna put some. Uh, I'm not used to painting. Uh, bending over a table like this, by the way. I, some. Of, I passed around a. Uh, hand out of me painting outside, and I paint almost vertical outside. And the reason is I, didn't, I don't like bending over my French easel uh, outdoors, so I started, I started painting sort of like an oil painter outside, and uh, I kind of like it, so I've actually, when I demoed the painting of uh, Winslow Homer's Blue Boat, I, I did it uh, easel inside because you're seeing that in reverse, and, and I didn't want to, somehow if you're painting a famous painting, in reverse, it can look funny to everybody, so I painted it standing up, and we have a smaller group, so, so it worked. So I'm going to uh, say that that sky is actually uh, okay. And uh, let me, i got some water coming down here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to put some, uh, by the way, my photograph, uh, if you can see in the, there's no sky in this, and there's no, there's no, there's nothing up there. The, the photograph ends with the waterfall. But uh, I wanted to put a sky in. It gave me an excuse to leave some nice whites, and uh, so I'm going to go for some. Uh, I'm going to put some uh, carefully orchestrated trees in here. Paint these as quickly as I can. Hope for the best. Oh, nice red. I do have some maskoid to have a, I have a couple of them. I'm going to paint a little bit. I'd like to save some of that white on the rock. I didn't, I didn't I got gray in there already when, I, when the colors mixed together. If you mix the three primaries together, you get gray. As a matter of fact, that's how I get gray. That's how I make gray. I typically do not like to paint on this kind of a painting in gray. If I'm going to paint in gray, I think you'll see some of them over there that are, I paint 100% gray. I would generally paint, I prefer to paint around, that's me there, around me without using maskoid, and then, then it would be some goofs and paints would run into, run into me. And, but I didn't want to take the time to paint around me because that's not a terribly important part of the painting in terms of if I'm going to paint a waterfall. Now the other thing, I'm going to put a lot of moss on the rocks, so I was going to say a spot out in this corner and I forgot, you know what I'm going to also paint with my, I always paint like this, I just forgot, I, uh, I have my palette tilted so the water runs down and I never put paint in the, in the two corners, but those are my gutters. So I let the water run down into those. So I'm going to, I'm, uh, I forgot I was going to mix up a, a nice pile of moss green. That looks pretty mossy. So I'm going to put some moss green up, up in the... didn't mean to splash up into the mountains, up into the tr trees in there, so... This is going to dry pretty light. So I got a, I got a 
I got a little bit of a goof here, so I'm going to. I wasn't going to put a tree back there, but I think I am now. I want to pick up my goose. <laughs> a, little, a little error correction there. That white space there looks pretty good. I may just, I may, I may just leave that. Total accident. Get a little more orange over here. This is going to dry pretty light because I'm painting very wet. Generally, uh, I like to wet the whole piece of paper, by the way, when I start. But it doesn't work too well in, a, in this kind of a, a venue because uh, it just doesn't dry. But when I'm painting at home and I, in my studio, I, I just lay the, I have cardboard and I lay it on the floor. I let them dry and I go on and I paint something else. I'm going to put a few darks up there. Let me get rid of the puddles. Okay, so I sort of rely on ultramarine blue if I want a dark. I can use the Prussian blue too. That I don't want too many darks over here in the corner because I'm going to put a tree. Take some off the paper here. I'm going to put a tree up through there. And uh, so I don't want too many. The photograph, by the way, which I haven't looked at yet, but anyway, I will when I get to the waterfall part, has quite a few really strong darks. And as a matter of fact, the photograph makes it look black up in here in a few spots, and I don't want to do that. Maybe it make it a little darker around me. I never wear a white shirt, by the way. I like to put, I like to put uh, white shirts in paintings, but I never wear a white shirt. That looks okay. I'll put some branches or something in there after, after a while. Okay, so now I'm going to, uh, I may stay with this round brush for just a minute. I'm going to save my moss green. I'm going to put more moss than is, than is there. And I assume that's why the name of the thing is Moss Glens Falls. I've never, it's kind of an unusual name. But what I try to get, I'm going to try to concentrate on is leaving, I'll get that to bleed together, but we'd like to leave some white. Up there. Uh, just a kind of a white sliver every so often. If I, if I generally paint fast enough, uh, they, they become accidental whites. So that's what I'm going to do. They're, they're going to look maybe intentional, but they're going to be accidental. And I would like to leave some of that nice color I put on initially. That's pretty light. But uh, all I'm trying to do is create something that's sort of interesting with color. And I want to soften that edge in just a minute. But I haven't put any darks on yet, so I'm going to come back in and uh, maybe I'll put a couple in. So I, I told you I mixed uh, grays. You see, the, I mixed grays using uh, just primary color. So there's cadmium or uh, cobalt blue. This is gamboge. This is any one of the reds. This is this is, and that's actually fairly dark, but it's it's definitely gray. And if I add blue to it, and I add red to it, and I add yellow to it, you get a pretty lively gray. At least I think you do. That's why I like to paint grays. That's why I don't use, one of the reasons why I don't like paints gray, one of the many reasons. It's just uh, too, uh, I think it's too ugly to, it's an uninspiring color. You probably haven't noticed that I do like color, so. <laughs> so I think uh, this is going to be okay. It's looking all right so far. I mean, just a blend of colors. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to put some darks in there to pop it out as a. Uh, I'll watch where my water where my uh, water is. There's a little bit of water here. This is all still rocks, and I forgot my green already. Shucks. Well, I'm going to introduce some green in here. I'm just going to overpower the color that's there. Maybe I get it to run a little bit. Throw a little more yellow into... Yeah, that looks okay. There's none of those things hanging down, but I thought, you know, why not? I thought they'd be kind of nice. 
So I mean, uh, it's a. Uh, There's kind of an ugly color, but there's not much of it, so I'm not too worried about it. And you can, I can overpower that, so I'm still painting pretty lightly. There's a little bit nicer gray. Now this is what I was going to use my uh, clean water for <laughs> before I muddied it up. I'm just going to soften this edge. By the way, my towel was, uh, this is a white towel at one time, right? <laughs> and if you mix uh, enough red, yellow, and blue in that, it turns gray, and that's the color of the towel. Okay. okay, so that's the edge of my waterfall. This is called a uh, horsehair waterfall. It's a cascading one, so one of the tricky parts about this is it is coming closer as it gets closer to me, so it should be uh, it should come darker as it comes forward. One of the things that uh, I will caution, if you haven't painted many waterfalls, don't paint the water too early would be one suggestion I'd make. Uh, I notice I'm teaching that students start painting the water and they get too much color in the water, and when they get done, they've lost all their whites. So that's, uh, and it's hard to get them back unless you want to use opaque white. So uh, I need to have that dry up there for just a minute. Uh, no, I don't either. I'm going to change my mind here. I had that puddle of water there, which I didn't pick up on earlier there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some light color up here and leave some whites again intentionally. There's a nice dry brush stroke. That'll be okay. to look like, like that side so that's why I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a tree over here now, now I'm gonna go for some gray that actually the Janet's violets rose and uh, Prussian blue make a pretty nice purpley gray I kind of like it anyway now this this is where I've got some mascoid right there so I can come over here so generally, I would just paint around this water, sort of like more like this. But now, since it's since I'm working, uh, trying to work quickly, back to my back to my green moss. So that green looks looks looking pretty nice to me over there. Now, see, it's all running together and kind of looks like moss. Put a little, well, maybe a little stronger color there. I don't want to get too much there because I'm putting a tree over the top of it. I put some moss over here. So I'm going to put more, as I said, I'm going to put more moss than is than there. Because why not? I like green better than gray. So I can't pass up the opportunity. I don't need much of an excuse. You probably figured that out. Put some color in anyway, so. Look at that, uh, that paint dried so light on there that uh, those are pure blue rocks. How about that? So all I'm doing is, uh, so I like the paint just mixing a variety of colors. And I like to think I'm in brushes here and you see that's that's what happens to me. I got engrossed in the painting and I forgot this is supposed to be my painting brush and this is supposed to be my lifting brush. <laughs> that's what happened to me. That's why I got the two yellows all uh, all all lost up, all dirty. So I'm just uh, softening these edges. One thing that you can do also and it's kind of fun, it's not on the I'll show you that in a minute. There's something else I was going to do. I'm going to leave that hard edge there. I think that's okay. Let me put some more. Uh... Let's 
That's just raw sienna, almost pure raw sienna. I think I'll stay away from the, try not to make it look too much like the other side. But I am going to put a tree over that to cover it. That's what I was, that was my strategy. Let me see where my next piece of water is. This, this part I am looking at the photograph because I want to, I want to kind of pick up where my, uh, by the way, I found these rocks, to me, they have, they have a lot of red in them. So I may push the red, but that's okay. I, I, uh, since, since I thought they had a lot of red in them. That's red. It is red. <laughs> I gotta match my shirt, that's why I put my red shirt on today. Just so I'd be sure to remember to paint them red. Now, I'm gonna paint, now I'm painting uh, around water a little bit. Since I put that red in there, I'm going to stick with it so it doesn't look too obvious that I... Ooh, that looks... that looks okay. Jeez, I'm not, I'm not so good with the two-brush technique here. I paint pretty fast anyway, by the way. Yeah, this is I'm probably uh, painting a little bit faster than I normally would, but... I do paint fast. We, we had a, a woman I know who said she, the thing she really wanted, this is this woman about 90, she wanted to be fast and loose. <laughs> and, uh, In painting? Uh, well, that's, that was the joke. We could, we'd never let her forget that one. <laughs> never let her forget it. As a matter of fact, we gave her the business the whole time we were painting. Fast and loose is right. Okay, I'm, while I'm up in this part, I'm going to uh, keep working my way down because I do want to become a little bit darker. So now I'm over in the... Uh, middle of my falls here. So this is where I, I want to be somewhat careful that I don't get too much pain on this. Little blue dot. For this, I am looking at the photograph a little bit. It's too dark. I got three equal, almost four, I got almost three equal shapes here, so I'm going to get rid of this one in the center here. So I don't have that. Now, one of the things I was telling you before you can do is kind of fun. Let me see if, if, uh, if I test, test my water to see if I've got it right. I'm just going to come down here and lift. And that, yeah, it sort of works. That's just clear water. That's all. Uh, just clear water. I'm just lifting a little paint. So I'm trying to give the illusion that it's uh, it's painted over the rocks. The I mean, the water, excuse me, is running over the rocks. That's kind of the illusion I'm trying to give here. We're just plain water. I'll soften this here. Say that sometimes it's oh I got too much coat I don't like it then I like it so I says that's all right <laughs> kind of a uh, hey you know it's uh, you know, some of you kidding me about the fact that it wasn't frustrating you know uh, I don't find painting frustrating because the very worst thing you can do when you're painting is to ruin a perfectly good piece of watercolor paper. <laughs> And that's that's kind of my mindset now. When you're when you're up in front of a group like this, you can of course 
be a complete fool of yourself, but uh, if you're just painting by yourself, I mean, really nothing, nothing bad's gonna happen. As long as you're having a good time, what difference does it make? That's kind of, uh, and, I, and, I've, and I have ruined a lot of paper, by the way, so I, and I don't mind. Yeah, uh, someone, uh, I don't know who it was, said when you paint, you should paint like the paint is free. It's kind of a good, uh, because I was saying people would score these little dinky little blurbs of paint out and rather than putting in a putting out a substantial amount of paint. And uh, so and I always paint like uh, I, I, that mentality I have is uh, I don't play golf and I don't ski. And my friend, my good friend, just bought a five hundred dollar golf club. One lousy <laughs> golf club. But five hundred dollars, I'll tell you, will take you a long way in painting. <laughs> With supplies, I mean. So I figured that the heck if I spend four hundred dollars for paper, which I do, it's going to last me uh, a good long time. And I'm going to go a little bit higher with this one. And uh, so he's helped me rationalize that uh, it's okay to do this. So that's sort of a. Uh, it's actually looking okay to me right now. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to get darker now. I'm coming closer, so I'm going to try to get darker and uh, see if I can if I can do this. So I'm going to stay in the water, which is where I am right now. So I'm going to stay there. And this is uh, that's not darker yet. That's pretty purpley. But that's okay. I don't mind staying in the purple there. That's dark. Ooh, that's really dark. That might be too dark. It is too dark. So I'm just going to hit it with water. It's too dark compared to all the rest of what I've got above it, so just a false note. So I'm going to lift some here and see if I can't make it look like the water's coming over that, too. I think what I need is a little bit of the red up in that to tone it down there. That's a little better. I put a little too much of the Let's see, where am I in my picture here? So there's all these little uh, drops of water coming down. And that's why it's called a horsehair. Now I lost, I lost an edge here totally, it ran together. I'm, I'm gonna leave that over. I'm gonna have enough, uh, enough crisp edges, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. And then down here I'm going to uh, soften this a little bit now too. So the water's hitting the rock below here. And yeah, I got a little bit of water in this. I tend to paint with quite a bit of water. A lot of wet and wet painting. Look at the look at the blossoms I got over here. Uh, I even got some up in the sky. No, it's trees. Uh, that one definitely won't be a problem. I'm going to cover that one. This one I'll just blend into the rocks. It'll be okay. Sometimes I watch those. Most of the time I don't pay attention. It's it's one of the hazards of painting with a lot of water. Actually, this brush is holding a little too much paint for me right now. Have a, uh, a little smaller brush. Do you have special brushes that special brand that you use? No. Actually, my favorite brush is this one. This is a, a brush that's really in bad shape, and I had to, I repainted the handle, by the way. <laughs> but it's really nice. It holds a nice edge. I really like it. And uh, now I uh, somebody gave me some. Uh, Uh, what do you call the good brushes? Uh, Kolinsky? Yeah. And, and uh, actually, that's what this one is. And I, I'm having a little trouble with that because I've been using these synthetic brushes all this time, and uh, mm -hmm. that holds a lot more water. So I'm having, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, and I haven't quite, I haven't quite managed yet. I do like them, they're nicer, nice and soft. This half inch brush I'm using is a little bit, this is going to be my lifting brush, it's a little bit uh, 
stiffer, I found. And uh, so it's pretty good for things like this. You can't really lift with uh, with a cleanser. You can't, you can't. But it's nice for applying big, juicy washes. I will say that. And uh, so there's a nice right here. There's a rock that looks very red to me. That's close to what the color of it is, I think. So I'm gonna I'm gonna improve the rock a little bit. That's all. I got my can of spray paint out and I painted the rock. And then to vary the color in it a little bit, I'm gonna put some blue. Let's hope that that dries okay. Okay, now I'm coming over here and I wanna get angle back to this brush now. I go back to my lime green and I wanna put some more lime green over here and I'd like to kind of a nice shape for the lime green. Some sort of a random shape doesn't really matter. It's just uh, it's just moss, right? It grows anywhere. That looks pretty good. I didn't, I didn't end up with any in there. And there's actually a right, right below it. There is on, the, on my photograph. There's a there is a huge rock right. No, it's down here. I haven't quite gotten it. I'm not painted anyway. I've got the green in my in my brush. It's a big big rock. It's really covered with moss here. So well. Um, let me blend that so it's more green and blue. See, I've got a flood on that thing right now, and uh, that's quite all right. It'll it'll do something. There's a lot of green on that. So I'm gonna put some more over here. Nice shape on the green. That looks okay. Now I'll come back to. Uh, I'm gonna paint the rock a little bit darker, a little more intense with color up into the. Into the green moss, so it's sort of uh, so I don't have any hard edges there. And I've got a I've got a water coming down here, which I did not put the mask white on. I think I just missed it. I think I intended to put it on. I just uh, I got a rock here that I'd like to leave uh, white on. And I think what I'll do, that's an accidental weight there, so I may make another accidental weight or two. No, that's fine. That looks okay. I do have a flood down here, so I have to pick this up. When you paint outdoors like this, the, the floods are kind of interesting. See, I do get runs and drips occasionally, depending on how hot it is. If it's really hot out, it, it doesn't matter. It dries really quickly. That's definitely gray. I'm running down there like crazy. So I've got the other side of that. Uh, let's pick this drip up. I've got the other side of that. Uh, there is a, a little bit of. Uh, I did put some mask at the top. I see where I put it, but I didn't put it any on this piece here. So I'm going to paint around. This is what I was trying to avoid. I was having to do all this fussy painting around because I like it to look like water coming down. Sneak some green out here. I think that that'll read okay. Let me go back to my clean brush here. I would like to make a link right here. I suck that dried on me already. I've got a little fridge scrubber here on this, and it can't be can't be too dry. I just put it on there, so. Jeez, I saw a woman who did a demo for our group, and she she put mask wet all over the paper, and she spent about a half an hour scrubbing it with a fresh screw. Oh my God. 
So that's why I don't like it. She, she didn't like the, the results that came out, so she went to fix them. But I thought the fix was painful. And uh, you know, she had, she had marks all over the paper. And, uh, however, I will tell you that Winslow Homer gouged his paper. And he, I think he did it with a hunting knife. And uh, he gouged that, that painting that I did. And I, so I tried it. I tried to duplicate. I couldn't. I don't have a hunting knife. I couldn't gouge it, so I just lifted it. But he clearly tore the paper, and he, he was very tough on this paper. But he beat the heck out of him. You don't can't see that in the photographs. No. But up close, you definitely can see it. It's it's quite impressive but, uh, to see his paintings up close. The cute story about that is I got in this room with. Uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I, made, I made a reservation, and I was the only person that year that saw Homer's paintings hardly ever on display. And uh, so I, you know, when you're in there, you can't uh, touch the paintings, obviously. You can't photograph them. You have to buy photographs from the museum. That's okay. And you can only take notes with a pencil, I think for sort of obvious reasons. And uh, so anyway, I did that, and I was mesmerized by his paintings. But nine of them, they were so they're on the table like this, and I'm sitting there, and I can't move none of them. And there was an attendant there, and uh, from the from the museum, and uh, so this group came in of uh, Chinese uh, people, young students, and they were looking at some Chinese something or others that were about nine inches square, all about 98% white. And here I am over the other end of the room with these magnificent homers that are bright and vibrant and beautiful. So the guy comes up to me, the attendant, and says, uh, you can stay as long as you want, but we've got we've to put these away because this group coming in, the Chinese group, says they, they get one glimpse of Homer's paintings and they're not going to want to be looking at those white things that they're looking at. And uh, so this group came in, so I went down to one at a time after that point. This group came in and uh, didn't hear a peep out of They were really quiet. The instructor was giving talks and et cetera. And uh, so finally they got all done. And uh, so the guy, the intent came up and asked me if I minded if they came over and looked at the thing. I said, no, of course not. So, they all came over and all of a sudden, ooh, and ah, and oh my god, and they all started chatting. All of nine of them were talking at one time. It was just a riot. And they all left and they were still all talking and laughing. And up to that point they hadn't said a word. So I think they were a lot more impressed with Winslow's paintings than they were with the stuff they were looking at. And I looked at it and I, I, I couldn't figure out what, they, what, what the fuss was about. Apparently they were pretty, pretty famous Chinese art. It didn't do a thing for me. but. Uh, it must have been an important part of, the, of their collection. So I want to soften this edge. Tom, I'm loving your palette. That looks like a great abstract right there. Yeah, I've, tr I've tried that a few times, by the way. <laughs> I've, I've taken a piece of paper and stuck it in it. Sometimes my palette's been great and I do this and it doesn't come out very good. I've tried it, though. <laughs> I said, oh my god, sometimes the palette's better than the painting. <laughs> Okay. How are we doing here? Okay. I'm uh, closing in on here, I think, I hope. So I've got some more of these uh, things up here. And I'm just going to soften these again. Okay. 
Looks like anything's not there. I can't quite tell. It does generally have to stand back and take a look, take a look from a distance every so often. Now I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, try to stand on the water. I'm just going to try to uh, throw some color on here and we're going to try to drag it down into the water, see if I can create the illusion that water is coming over the tops of the rocks. You can do this with tissue too, but if you want to. You can try this as. Uh, back and smooth out the hard edges as well. See, that's my problem. I, I, that's the problem with my yellow. I never get the clean water thing figured out. Because I'm looking at the painting and I'm, I'm just kind of throwing my brush at the water. Okay, so now I'm, I think I'm down to the uh, foreground. I'm going to uh, try to create some uh, little mist of the water here, maybe. fast on me today. Okay, that's not going to come out, so I'm going to uh, make a slight modification. Should uh, should lift. It's not. Uh, it's pretty wet. Let it dry pretty fast. Okay, now I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to come back and put some darks up there, but before I do that, I'm going to just decide that my values get schedule correct. I want to come in and do the foreground rocks just so I can pump these up a little bit. And then I'll, I'll take whatever dark I paint here and I'll go a little bit lighter as I go back. So I'm going to leave a little bit of white, a little bit of the moss here on this tree. This, this rock actually in the photograph has quite a bit of a it's a, it's a nice orangey red color on this rock. It's quite mottled. You gotta be careful because I, I got water over here on this side too. I don't want to get too uh, I don't want to get too dark over there where I've got my water. Let me see, let me change color here. I get another 
different blue. I'm going to leave that dry brush stroke there. That, that kind of works for me. Think about painting uh, quick like this. You don't have a whole lot of time to. Plan too much. I had an idea what I was, how I want to approach this conceptually, but whether or not you can actually do that is a, it's kind of another, <laughs> sort of another issue. It just occurred to me. I'd like to get a little more. I like how this, this is running down over here. Maybe I'll kind of put some like green up and let it run down in here too. This must be, might be too harsh back here, too light, so I may just blend it a little bit, maybe a soft edge or two here. I think that looks okay. Come back to my darks here. I'm going to go light and dark as I come down through here now. Can I ask you what kind of paper you're using? Paper? Yeah, what paper? This is Windsor Newton 140 cold press. And I was telling somebody before my paint outside, I use Arches 140 cold press. And I don't use that inside because it has an odor that I find annoying. So I paint vertical on Arches outside and horizontal <laughs> and Windsor Newton inside. Other than the odor, you find it works about the same? I actually like the Arches. But, you know, when I teach, I can tell if the students are using it, I can smell it even. So, uh, it probably is a disadvantage in having a big nose, maybe. I don't really know. I can, <laughs> it, it's, I'm very sensitive to that, to that smell, and I find it really offensive. And when they really had the problem a few years ago, I had to, uh, I had a bunch of, uh, Arches paper that I I took to uh, our watercolor group and gave it all away. And I threw I had a whole stack of paintings in my studio on the hot, humid day. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I couldn't stand it. I had to throw them all out. I just I just couldn't do anything with the paintings. I just got so it was so frustrating to. So I wrote I contacted Arches about it, and they they were aware of the problem, and they said they're they're fixing it. So they fixed it and made it better, but they didn't make it go away. So that's what I do. I, I, uh, I paint. I still like their paper. I just uh, decided to, I'm going to use it on the outside. So, so I have two paper piles at home. Do you ever use rough? I do occasionally, yeah. I like rough too. I don't use, uh, I've used 300 pound paper on occasion, but that's pretty expensive, so. Yes. So, and I, uh, you know, I was one of those people who, uh, I had some 300 pound paper and it was kind of like having that new suit you put in the closet, at least for me. <laughs> you never use it. You never use the darn thing? Yeah. So, I figured that's ridiculous. So, I just decided that the best thing to do was to just not use 300 pound paper. So, I got, I got used to this and uh, I don't have any, if, you'll notice that even with all the water I'm using, the, the paper, this paper, it's not, it's not taped down, it's pretty flat still. I don't yeah. know if you can see that, but, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't. It doesn't buckle, and uh, it buckles if you get if you get really non-uniform water content. But uh, that happens uh, so infrequently with me that I, that I just don't have a problem. I don't worry about it. And I have a friend who irons her paintings. Mm -hmm. and I say, look, I'm not ironing my clothes. I'm sure not going <laughs> to iron my paintings. <laughs> and. Uh, so I, I, you can flatten the painting. I, I flatten them just by putting water. I, I wet the back of the paper, and I 
This is after it's totally dry, of course. You wet the back of the paper, and I lay it on this plastic sheet. No, I lay it on cardboard. I put the plastic sheet on top, so it's on the back, the wet side. Then I pile books on it. Let it set overnight. It's perfectly flat the next day. It's still damp. You take it out and it dries, and it's fine. So that's how. That's what I do if I get. Uh, I get wet paper, or, or if I get paper that has buckles in it. Now, I, I did not leave as many lights in this as I had intended. I sort of uh, got carried away with it. I love the darks, and I just got kind of carried away with them, so it is what it is. I intended to leave more lights, but so be it. This is the corner. It's not too important. Whoop. So this can be dark. This will be okay now. It's a little too purpley. We get rid of the purple. One thing about a painting with uh, the palette that I use, without using any grays or browns or any of those kinds of colors, is that most of the colors stay pretty vibrant. And I kind of like that. So I don't have trouble really with, uh, I can put a nice light in here. I don't have trouble with, uh, there are too many dull colors. If you, if you mix all three of them together, it'll turn dull, but I'm not sure that that's okay. But anyway, I don't want to fuss with it anymore. So uh, let, me, uh, let me, how's my green coming? Yeah, the green looks okay over there. I want to put a little bit of green. This is the light side of this rock. So I want to put a little green in that. Maybe, maybe that can run down a little bit too. So I'm going to try to paint this side. I'm going to try to concentrate now on leaving the more light on this side because I made that side pretty dark. So I'm going to leave, try to leave more light on this side. So my dark here is mostly alizarin and uh, the two dark blues, uh, Prussian and uh, there's no water over there. Prussian and ultramarine. So that's a light part of that rock. That's, that's almost black there. That's why I can mix black okay, but, but you know, look at how black that is. You don't really need to mix black. I can't think of why I ever want black. Anyway, I did a painting of a black lab one time, and there was not a touch of black paint in the entire painting. And it came out great. If you look at a photograph or look at a dog, a black lab dog, in sunlight, you will see a lot of light on the dog. Just look at it closely. Don't, don't get hung up with the notion that it's a black dog. It must be black. There's actually some pure white on a totally black dog in sunlight. Doesn't seem possible, but uh, it's, it's there. It's pretty amazing. Now that looks okay, man. It's gonna, I just would like to soften a couple of edges in here. students came in one time and she had a painting and asked me to critique it and I said, well, it doesn't hang together, there's no color harmony in it. And I said, it looks to me like, the, the painting looks like you, you cut out a piece and stuck it on the painting. So that's the way it looks. And she says, well, that's what I did. <laughs> Lo and behold, she cut, she cut out a thing and she glued it onto the painting. Now, I didn't see the fact that she had done that, but it, but it looked that way because there was, I told her it, looked, it had a different color palette. It looked like it was painted by two different people. She said she painted it all, which I believe she did. But, geez, that was funny. I've never seen anybody do that, but she was, well, she was a character. And it was pretty interesting, actually, but... She's one of these uh, people who uh, teaches uh, workshops in uh, uh, therapy, therapy art, I guess you'd call it, right? We supposedly bring people out of their depression and things like that. So I give her credit. I mean, she's, she's, she tries hard. And a nice lady. And She's got a long gray with her. She had, she had trouble with a lot of people, but uh, I kind of liked her. 
she was a, she what you'd call an eccentric, I guess. rocks in this painting, I can, I can tell that already. Whew. Too many rocks. The reason I picked this one was, as I think I told you, because the green, I was kind of intrigued by the name, which is kind of fun, since I live outside of Mons Falls. And it's, in, it's on Road 100, by the way, if you ever drive up through Vermont. It's a beautiful road. Uh, it's right goes north south right through the middle of Vermont. It's considered one of the most scenic highways in Vermont. It's beautiful. Seventy one hundred? Yeah. It's not a it's not a road you want to go on to get anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I mean if you're in a hurry, you don't, this this is not don't a road. Take that. Yeah, don't, don't take that road. But but if you just out for a leaf peeping thing, it's it's wonderful. And this this waterfall, by the way, is uh, pretty visible from the uh, from the road. And it has a parking area, and uh, you can get a, you can get a close look at it. And uh, I was going to make a one thing I think I forgot. If you haven't painted a lot of waterfalls, I don't recommend painting these straight on ones. These are the hardest ones to paint. Do the more profiles like some of mine over there, which which is the more natural thing where you're seeing water in a in a stream. But uh, and I wasn't going to do this, and I thought, oh, what the heck. And leave town in a hurry if I have to. <laughs> I didn't leave the car running this time like I did last time, but I, I could. Okay, I fussed along with too much of that. Okay, now I want to go back and uh, so this is very dark. So I do want to go back now and put a few darks in just to help pop my water out a little bit. I'm going to stay pretty much with the same palette. I, one of these times I'll have to clean that up, but uh, so uh, maybe in through here. I can stand a little dark in here. Are you going to take the mask right off, or just leave it here? No, no, I'm going to take it off. If it dries, I'm going to try to stay away from that so it dries. Okay. No, I'm going to take it off, yeah. Because I want to put me on if I've got time. I like to paint me. Looks like a skeleton up there, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it may be the way I put the, the mask coat on. I try not to, uh, this dry totally light. I lost this all together in here. I try not to uh, make it look like a, Totally a stiff figure. So I try to put, put uh, that's why I kind of don't like the mascoid, because I take that off, it's going to be pretty stiff. But I try to, I try to put the, the mascoid on in an irregular looking uh, in an irregular looking uh, shape so that it's. Uh, where I had trouble before. So now I'm just kind of making stuff up. So uh, it's okay. No, no, one, no one's ever going to hold this painting up at these waterfalls. You won't be able to find them anyway unless you're on 100. So no one's ever going to know. And I'm going to call it this and no one will. No one will know the difference. So just a few more darks in, in these series here just, just for a little bit of interest in them. Helps me tie the painting together so a little bit better. Now I want to, I want to uh, have that little dinky brush here that I, uh, and I'm going to. Uh, this one helps if you've got a glass of wine or two when you've got the shakes or something, you know. So <laughs> this uh, works a little bit better with. Uh, to uh,
Oh, here's my brush. I did have that, uh, that background there, so that's going to stay. It's not, uh, it's not going to harm anything up there. And I, could use a, I could use a few more vertical, uh, maybe, maybe one up here. Okay, I'm not, uh, I want to get a, there's a, a bottom of this should be darkened through here. And I'd like to get just a little bit. This uh, the manganese because it's uh, it's more transparent than cerulean, which is the most common one to use. But that's right. So all my colors are uh, either transparent or semi-transparent. And uh, one, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I keep a very wet sponge in my. I gotta be careful. I want to stay away from that mess. Quite. I keep a very wet sponge in the. Uh, As a matter of fact, it was so wet the thing leaked on the way down this morning. Uh, and uh, it's always an interesting thing. Generally, somebody asks me about mold and the, the thing. It's a little too dark. And uh, so I said, no, I've never had mold. And, and uh, so then one of my friends at a watercolor society meeting said, the reason I don't have mold is because I don't have any cat colors. And I did not know that. So I've never, I, 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 cad colors are okay, except they don't mix very well. <coughs> if you use them by themselves, they're fine. I don't like them, like them the way they mix. So consequently, I've never used them. And I don't like the students to use them because it's one more thing to remember about watercolor that's already got a lot of things to remember. So, uh, I said, well, I was just lucky in that regard that I did, I did not know that until she told me. Because she was having trouble getting mold in her thing. And then she, she did a little detective work and found out that was the issue. I said, oh, geez, that's, that was good to know that she, she helped me out of that one. through the rock here of some kind. This one has, the, in the photograph, there's, there's, there's these, uh, it has these kind of things on. I don't, uh, they're, they're like shale where it's peeled off, but they're, they're kind of hard to paint, so I didn't, I didn't really bother with any of those particularly. I just. Uh, this one I know I can break up. Here's where I get the shakes, a little glass of wine. You know what the trouble with the wine is, is if you have it at the same time, I end up putting my damn paintbrush in it, right? Right. <laughs> I don't have enough trouble keeping these two things straight, so. Uh, long, I know people put their, their coffee in and stuff like that, so it's, uh, and I definitely would because uh, I don't know if you've noticed. I, I most of my concentration is, is right here. Not I haven't particularly looked at the photograph a lot, and I haven't 
whether my pallet's a total disaster or not. I haven't looked at it too much. Okay, I want to put that big tree in. I told you I was going to do this. Okay, I will uh, try to impress you though. I hate to get rid of all these nice colors though. I'll at least clean this up occasionally. Once a day, maybe. Well, I'll have to show you that cute one at the end. At the end, when I'm all done, I'm going to show you something funny that uh, happened to me. The last time I gave a demo, it was really, it was really priceless. I just absolutely cracked me up. Now, it was an old geezer that asked me this, but we don't have any old geezers today here today, so. No. So I'm, I'm probably okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put a, uh, I'm gonna put a tree over this. Maybe I'll leave that one alone. So I got a nice spot here that doesn't have much going on, so. Change color. And the only reason I'm, I'm doing this is because uh, I want it to look different from the other side. I don't want these two sides to be to be too much the same. I just hope this thing dries dark enough. Now you're putting that on in green, but the camera's only picking some of it up as white. So you see where it's white on the on the screen, but on your pink, it's just must be the shine. I think it's oh, maybe it's because it's wet. These that is fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have picked that up. On your painting, it's definitely green. It's definitely green. Yeah, it's, it's a dark green. That's all it is. That's that's what this is too. This, this, these are dark green too. I want to. Uh, I want to soften this uh, bottom edge or something. It looks like it comes out of a rock. There is a tree in this, by the way. And then what I'm going to do is uh, leave most of that. I'm going to try to, whoops, these shucks. That's how I get paint all over me. My brush fell into the orange. I am pretty good to, I haven't used as much orange as I normally do. That's because I got a red shirt on, I guess. <laughs> I had a, uh, I want to be careful that it looks too much like the tree branches. So I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get the shakes here. Just, uh, oh, you know what, I don't have, uh, so I did put one over there. I need, I need to kind of, I like these uh, vertical rocks. And they, they can be lost edges with the stones, to, or with the tree, too. That's, that's all right. But this is a sort of a, hopefully not, see, I spattered a uh, color on that side, sort of red. You can't really see that. I put a little orange on this side. Okay, let me do a couple of things up here and I'll take the mask right off and see what I've got here. Oh, that's really okay, though. Okay, let me see if... Uh, let's see, I don't anything over here. Okay, let me put a... Uh, Now 
Now, generally, when I after I finish a painting, I, if I'm studio painting, I uh, pin it up on my wall and look at it for several days, and I turn it upside down and I do all kinds of things with it. If I'm painting plain air, I don't do that at all. I never, I never touch a plain air painting once come inside. I come inside because you know you. Uh, you're painting differently inside versus outside, and uh, you know I've, I've lost the uh, the feel of the place in the moment, and, and that. so I never touch them. What I do is what I showed you in the other ones. If I really like it, I'll uh, I'll paint it over again, and I just uh, I pin it up, and I say, what did I like, and what don't I like about it? too white and then I uh, see if I can't improve the composition and I paint it over again and that's kind of what I do uh, with plain air paintings and I, I don't I, I rarely ever touch a plain air painting again I either get it or I don't but if, okay, if I captured the moment I was outside once you come inside your whole you know, it's kind of like uh, if you play golf, you don't play golf the same every day. And, you know, baseball players don't hit the same, or you can, basketball players, they don't score the same every game. So painting is the same way. You know, I, can't, I can't paint, I don't paint the same every day. So if, if you take a painting and you uh, come in and fix it, you, 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 know, you don't have the same. You're not in the same frame of mind, the same mood. It tends not to be uh, it tends not to be the same. That's the sort of my feeling. Plus the fact that I've lost my enthusiasm once I come inside and I've done onto something else. Okay. Let's start wrapping up. Yeah. Let me uh, see if I can take that mask off. I had my. It's under there. I see it. Let me see if I can get it off without messing anything up. Well, let me take, I know I'm dry up here. Well, actually, that came out okay. I kind of like the way it looks. It looks like it does look like a skeleton, but it, does, it doesn't look like, uh, it's not a hard-edged person. So, so I was successful in my, in my masking. because they're, uh, even though it's against the green background, the blue background, I think I'll be all right with that. My legs got a little fat there because I gained some weight. <laughs> Jeez, I, that's a, that was another story. I was painting outside with a, was a friend of mine. We were painting, and she was in front of me, and I put her in my painting, and God. I got all done. And she gave me the business. She says, I, gained, I put 25 pounds on. <laughs> and I realized, oh, God, that was a terrible thing to do. Always be kind. <laughs> so I did a, another painting, and I took 25 pounds off. <laughs> she was thrilled about that one. <laughs> I had to apologize profusely for that first one. I learned my lesson on that one, I'll tell you. So there, let's see, here, I got let me, uh, Face on me here. It's pretty dark. That's okay. I've got a hat on. That's not nice. Not nice. I think I should wear a red hat. Got all that green in the background, so I think I can put a little red hat up there. Now you can tell it's maybe from the color of my eyes, right? <laughs> I've got one arm that looks like I. Uh, 
looks like I came out of the concentration camp here. So I'm going to I'm going to put a white uh, short sleeve shirt. Doesn't look quite right, but you know what? It's it's close enough. And then I did, I don't think that I put mesco in this. I'm holding a. Uh, I did, and that's the way I like to put it on. By the way, I didn't I didn't put it all the way. So I'll put the middle of this. I'll leave the ends. And uh, oh, you know, I did miss some masking over here. I did put some of these. These are supposed to be. Uh, Birch trees. I was just, I was just looking for an excuse again for a white. So, uh, an excuse for a white that I could come up with. So, Let's see, I uh, a little on that. I got him here. Well, you know. Uh, I had I had fun anyway. So uh, this this I probably uh, would work on some more. But let me hold it up the other way so you can see it the right side up. How was the color on the, on the video? It's good. It's good. Well, actually, the color was pretty good. On that. Yeah. It was washed up. It's strong. It's strong. Not yeah. Yeah. No. That, that's pretty good. That's pretty close to what I got. Yeah. That's. Uh, that videos are better than the one on the, that I did in six years ago. Now you got to see it right, right side up. Let's see if I can hold the thing. It's, it's, it's still a little damp here and there. I can feel the, the paper's uh, damp. Now I got a few buckles on it, but not many. Not enough that I would flatten. Okay. Let's see one thing. This is what the, the see, did you see over there? This was so wet. Yeah. I can see that after I've looked at it for a while, I can do uh, quite a few things like that. This, this piece here doesn't look so good. I'm going to take a picture of you for the ice like the green ones. Yeah, this no, is this one. the side. Oh. Press the this little one here? Yeah. I don't see. Press it. This little one here? Watch the museum with the. Uh,